So here's Robin Becker. She's made the short walk over from her HQ over at UCA. And, and welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for doing this for us today. Well, let's start with the title of the book. It's a zombie book. So why is the title primarily brains? What's, what's significant about brains? Well, zombies love brains. They will eat them anytime, anywhere. But they'll eat other body parts as well. Okay. The brains are really the choice. Why? Why are the? Why are the brains? They, they just taste. Well, can zombies can't even taste though, can they? Or can they? Oh yes, they can. They taste can smell. The they can taste the deliciousness, the fecundity, the uh, aroma, the fragrance. They can taste. Well, they can smell brains uh, from a distance. At okay. least in my book, they can. And there's sure. a lot of different zombie mythologies, and then they zero in on the brains, and it's the. It's like the foie gras of uh, Got it. the body. Okay, yeah, bon appetit. Mm -hmm. well, look, you say there's a lot of different zombie <laughs> mythologies. Mm -hmm. So let's let's work over your zombie mythology, your zombie rules of the road or rules of order, if you will. Let's let's talk about what, uh, what, what uh, who are zombies first in your book? Well, my main character is Jack Barnes, and he was a professor in life, and okay. he is zombified, but he's one of the lucky few who retains sentience. He has cognition. He can okay. think and he can write. He can't talk. He can't operate a car. There's a lot. He has a lot of zombie limitations. Okay. But he can still. He's not brain dead. Okay. He's just a brain eater. He's a college. So so it, and he's the voice. <coughs> it, the voice in his person. head is, is the mm -hmm. first person narrator of the story in the, in the book. And, and how convenient for you. You're a college professor. So I know. You can, what a coincidence. It worked out that it way. It really did. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, I'm almost not a by design. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so that's and and you sort of get to. I mean that's the that's the beauty of this book. You sort of. Since there is no universal, worldwide accepted code of zombies, you sort of get to, to write the rules of life and death as far as your main characters go as the story moves on, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, a lot of people, I've had some reactions from the zombie community, um, distressed that my zombie can actually think, sure. saying, oh, that's breaking the rules. But I realize- Crossing the line. Crossing the line, yeah, but I tell yeah. them, I, well, I have told them in when you say the zombie community, you're, you're talking about people who are fans of zombies, yes, not, well, not the actual zombies right, who walk Right, right, mainly the surface. online yeah. zombie community. But okay. then I explain that any disease will display or present mutations. And clearly, if every single zombie is brain dead, there's going to be some kind of mutation where uh, anytime somebody might be resistant to a virus, they might be a carrier, there might be some kind of mutation where the zombie will be able to think. Also, a virus wants to survive. And if every single zombie is brain dead and eats every single human, when the zombies the die out, the virus will die out. Yeah. So th it makes sense that there would be that kind of mutation in order for the, the virus to survive. 